Thank you for joining us on another edition of Your City in Five. I'm your host, Ricky Saias. After being closed to the public since March, one of the city's most popular attractions, the El Paso Zoo, is set to reopen. Plus some more good news. The public library is bringing back some services. The zoo will open its doors to visitors on Wednesday, February 10th. Operating hours have been adjusted and guidelines will be in place to protect the health and safety of visitors, staff and animals. The zoo will open Wednesday through Sunday. Visitors and staff will be required to wear a face covering and practice physical distancing. The train, the carousel and the ropes challenge will remain off limits. The zoo also has additional safety measures. We're going to be closed Mondays and Tuesdays so we can do deep cleaning and thorough sanitation. And uh, so we're opening up Wednesdays through Sunday. Wednesday is is uh, 9.30 to 3 o'clock. We're going to close a little earlier, give us a chance to do some more things like that. And then weekends are going to be the same, 9.30 to 5. The zoo will continue to provide virtual programs and events on its Facebook page. And starting Monday, February 1st, the public library resumes curbside service at eight branches with the help of the bookmobile. The return of services is a small step to support the mental health and wellness of the community. While the number of COVID-19 cases continues, the city is getting the support of the state to receive more vaccines. El Paso is leading the state when it comes to efficiently providing the vaccine and health leaders are anxious to receive larger batches. As we know right now, it depends on what kind of shipments we receive from the state. We're proving to the state that we can't handle the load and we're asking for more every time we get a chance. The city of El Paso should be extremely proud of the community and what we've done to improve the system. We are not only working with our partners and fellow hub providers, UMC, who's a Community of Excellence member, but we're working with, with all of the providers in how we vaccinate. Health leaders are asking the public to be patient and register for the vaccine at epcovidvaccine.com. Staff continues to improve the website and vaccination distribution. Residents who have received both vaccine doses will soon be getting a survey to help provide feedback on their experience. Now more information on all of COVID-19 is available at epstrong.org. There's no doubt that COVID-19 has punched many small business owners in the gut. But as your city and five media specialist Jose Solis shows us, there's an online course available for small business owners that shows them how to survive the pandemic. So the city of El Paso and the Small Business Development Center have been partners for a couple of years now. So we work hand in hand with them uh, in, in helping to educate small businesses, uh, small business owners on how they can thrive in the community. You know, uh, small businesses, as, as everyone knows, is the backbone of our economy. In the class, we go over the five basic skills um, to being able to be a successful small business owner. What it allows a, a small business owner or someone who is planning to open a small business is to really under, understand the core skills. The Small Business Development Center um, has been putting this course on for many years and we highly encourage businesses to take the course. It's a very intense 12 week course that's going to teach them how to market their business, how to understand their financials, contract law, employment law. So it covers just about everything under the umbrella for small business, small businesses. Thank you. Bye. Small Business Management Institute is offered three times a year. Uh, we offer it in January, uh, which is called, you know, the spring semester. We offer it uh, for the summer session and then again in the fall. And I got to tell you, every time uh, we offer this class, it, it's close to selling out. If it doesn't, it, it sells out. Some very important information there. Now, if you're a small business owner and you're interested in signing up for that course, all you have to do is visit ElPasoBusinessStrong.org. Elsewhere, there's a phone scam that you should be aware of. Scammers are calling and pretending to be part of the El Paso Fire Department or the Firefighters Association Local 51 and asking for donations. If you get this call, don't fall for it, just hang up. The fire department and the association never ask for donations over the phone. Speaking of the fire department, free virtual tours are being offered online to children, students and parents. Participants can interact with firefighters and see firehouses and vehicles from their own home. To book your virtual tour, visit ElPasoFire.org. If the pandemic has shown us anything, it's the need for open space now more than ever. The Parks and Recreation Department and a local land developer are working together to make it easier to access the outdoors. Hunt communities and parks are creating outdoor spots inside new neighborhoods. The common access points, like the one on your screen in the Cimarron neighborhood, provide easy access to trails and arroyos. 
What we're going to work on is true trailheads. And these will be trailheads where people can park, where they can take their bicycles. Maybe there's a little bicycle uh, repair area. Uh, there's an opportunity to sit down in the shade. There's water for dogs, water for people. And they'll provide real trailhead access into open space. Hunt Community says they are committed to create more quality parks and open spaces. Now, once neighborhood access points are complete, they can be used by anyone. That's going to do it for us on this edition of Your City in Five from the El Paso Zoo. Zoo staff and the animals look forward to your visit. For Nigel Sherman, who's behind the camera, I'm Ricky Saias. Stay safe, be good to each other, and remember to mask up. We'll see you next time on Your City in Five.